Hi everyone and welcome to this Lightroom tutorial. If you're one of my thousands of subscribers, okay, maybe that's a slight exaggeration, then uh, welcome back. I appreciate it. it's been a very long time. And if you're new, thanks for popping by and taking a look. Today we're going to do something slightly different from the usual editing features that I show people and the catalogue usage. We're actually going to look at a bit of a workflow and that's because in the latest version of Lightroom, version 12, there's some new masking features and specifically we're going to look at the person masking features um, which are a great way of doing some retouching in Lightroom itself without going into Photoshop. You might still want to go into Photoshop or whatever editing package you use and do some final touches but if we can avoid it it's great. It saves on file space, PSD files are not small. If we can get away with just keeping our local RAW file uh, and working on that in Lightroom um, it's a great saving. So let's get into the development module and have a look at what we can do with the new version. I'm going to start with this picture of Katie. Go into the development module. Mainly because I'm not overly happy with the exposure on it. Um, I think it's one of the earlier shots that we took in the studio sitting. Um, but it'd be a good way of showing just what we can do with the new masking tools. So where are they? Well, under version 12 now, we've always had this masking option up here in the top right. Um, but what's happened in the latest version is they've expanded it out and if I click on it you'll see what it's doing is straight away it's detecting people and it's come back and the old select subject uh, mask which was in the previous version very similar to what it's done here and it's very good um, it masks really well to be fair but you'll see that it's picked out Katie as a person but what I can do now is if I click on that it'll actually go further for me and it will now give me the options to split out skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, who knows how to pronounce it, it's the white bit, um, sclera, sclera, that's what we'll say um, for the purpose of this tutorial, sclera. Um, but we can pick out these individual components and that allows us to really home in on specific areas um, for our retouching. So I'm gonna start just by selecting both the face and the body and we can create two separate masks if we want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to get it to create it as one mask, even though it's showing it's two parts here. Um, and if I just hit create mask, you'll see what it's done now is it's just selected the skin areas and it does a really good job, I have to admit, um, which is great. And you can see up here, we've got our mask that's been created. I'm just going to rename this. I'm just going to double click on it and I'm just going to call that skin, obviously so that we know what we're dealing with. And you can see here, it's still split out. We can see these two areas. If I hover over these little people things, you'll see it selects the individual mask still for us, but it treats it as one when we're working on it. And one of the quickest ways of retouching skin is to even out the blemishes and the, the redness. We can do it really quickly just using the clarity slider. If I get the clarity slider, I'm gonna pull it down. You can see how it's just changing the skin it's just evening it out and that's because clarity works on mid-tones it it, uh, it changes the contrast in mid-tones so we can smooth things out essentially in the skin areas so we can just do that we can play around with it um, and we can come back to it later as well if we want to I'm going to leave it about here and you'll see even though we've changed that clarity we've still got detail in the skin we haven't completely obliterated it and we can improve on that we can maybe put a touch more texture back in so that we don't lose any skin detail and we can increase the sharpness just a little bit as well, take it up. I have seen some stuff online that talks about taking noise out or in fact adding noise. If we do this, instead of removing noise, we're actually increasing the noise effectively. And that's one way that we can keep skin texture. I haven't noticed a lot of difference. It may vary depending on your style of picture. Um, but it is an option. It's no reason why you can't pull that down just to inject maybe a little bit more detail into the skin. We also have this amount slider at the top here, but we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail later on. But basically we can increase or decrease the amount of the masking. So we'll leave it back in the middle for now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna carry on and we're gonna create some more of these masks. We've got our skin one. I'm gonna go back to create mask. So select people again and click on our person. And let's just work on some hair. That's the next sort of like major part of the picture, if you like. I'm gonna create a mask just based on the hair. So you see again, it's done a really good job of masking the hair. Um, 
maybe lost a little bit up around the top here but not too much to worry about depending on what we're going to do with it I'm going to create the mask and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to increase the clarity slightly and I'm going to increase the texture and I'm just going to lighten the hair up a little bit as well that's all we're really going to do with this one maybe take out some of the shadow just to lighten the hair a touch and I'm not going to do anything else with that for now just want to use it as an example really again I'm going to double click on mask one and we're going to rename that to hair pretty straightforward we keep going it's very straightforward for us easy to do let's have a look at the white bits of the eye shall we the, the sclera uh, we'll create a mask and we can see the masks on here and um, if i just zoom in slightly so we can see what's actually going on um generally speaking we like to try and whiten this a little bit um so what we're going to do is we're just going to take the exposure up slightly maybe just give it a touch of blueness just by changing the color temperature just to make it slightly bluer um, and we can inject some clarity again which should just give it a bit of sharpness um, you can play around with these sliders though you another thing i tend to do is perhaps if there's a bit of redness in the eyes um, we can take some of the saturation out because obviously we're only dealing with white really so it doesn't matter so we can take the saturation down slightly um, yeah we'll leave it at that for now and again sclera there we go let's uh, just come out of there for a minute just want to show you comparing the side by side what we've actually got now so this has all been done just using the masking and I think we're starting to see an improvement already to be honest um, we've removed some of the blotchiness in the skin evened out the tones slightly um, and it's starting to look quite good in my opinion anyway let's zoom back out uh, go back onto our single image what else have we got go back into our masking tool and we're going to create a new mask select people and let's now actually do with the iris and the pupil of the eyes themselves i'm going to click on that create the mask and again i want to take the exposure up a little bit just to put a bit of life into the eyes there we go again i'm going to increase the clarity just to give it a little bit of sharpness and i'm going to take saturation up slightly as well okay and if we zoom in on that we can see exactly what what we're doing you can see just the eyes just to give them a bit of life a little bit dark in this picture you can see the flash is possibly a little bit too high uh, so we're losing some of that glint and if i play with the clarity here a little bit you can see just what that's doing as well so that's nice and we'll just call this one iris don't need to get too carried away let's come back out oops there we go good a little bit more work to do then keep using the masks we might as well use everything we've got create mask select people again and where are we at let's do um, eyebrows now next and create that mask and again for this one sometimes what I like to do is just darken but we'll start just by increasing the clarity because that would darken it slightly anyway you can might just be able to see that and we'll take the texture up on it let's go back in so we can see what we're doing you can just see I take it right up so texture and clarity just to give them a bit more definition change this one to eyebrows and we're renaming these for a reason uh, which will become apparent later on which is another great feature is the fact that we can save all these as presets and that's where this really excels so that's why we're naming these at the moment and you'll see in a minute why we've done that one more which i believe is lips we create mask select people and we take our lips create a mask 
let's just move up so we can actually see it and I got confused first time I did this because I forgot that the overlay was showing and it looked like she had really bright lips already um, you should be able to turn this off there we go if we just click on this show overlay option or we can actually change the color um, you can make it any color you like really Oops, try and move that out of the way for a minute so we can see what we do there we go um, and we can change the opacity of it as well so you can play around with that mask so that it works for you really um, based on the colors you're looking at um, how much of it you want to see that kind of thing take it down let's put it back up in the red area click on that one even there we go so yeah it can be a bit confusing when you've got the mask on it looks like they've already got really saturated lips so i tend to turn it off and then i can see what i'm doing and we are now just going to turn up the saturation a little bit on the lips there we go maybe again just a little bit of clarity just gives them a little bit of definition great slider to use clarity um, works for so many things maybe just increase the texture a little bit um, that'll do for now and as always rename this to lips and okay and if we close our masking tool down now and zoom back out let's do our before and after comparison again and hopefully you'll agree with me that um, we've already started to see a great improvement on the original picture um, not that it was that bad to start with but there you go okay a little bit more work i want to do and for this we're going to use another new tool and it's under here under our cloning options if i click on this option in the middle here um, we've had the here on the clone tool in previous versions the clone will literally just take an area that you sample and paste it over wherever you want to paste it um, the hill tool is slightly more clever and it will try and blend stuff in but this new one's really useful this is content aware tool it should tell us when we hang over it content aware removal tool and we can literally paint over an area and if we're lucky it will make a really good job at getting rid of whatever is there and replacing it with something that we want to see let's have a look at it in action it's easy to see what's going on then um, just come off of it for a minute and get our single view up and if we just zoom in a little bit so I'm going to select my content and wear tool and I don't have to worry about sampling or anything I can change the size of my brush using my left and right square keys and if I just hover over an area click on it and the computer basically works out what's going on in that area and will erase the bits we don't want which is great um, I've got the overlay tool turned off to never here if I put it back to auto you'll see why that is it puts this little marker to show where we've worked so as I click on areas you'll see that it adds that marker if I just do that area there um, I find it quite distracting and when you're trying to do other blemishes quite close to it it can get a little bit awkward um, so I tend to turn it off don't really need to see it um, and I can literally just go around now finding the little skin blemishes um, and you can be as thorough as you like with this or less so should you want to save a bit of time um, try to be sensitive um, only get rid of the kind of minor imperfections just going to hold the space bar so I can pull the picture down a little bit there we go change the brush size and I'm just literally going around the picture picking out areas where I just want to smooth things out slightly I won't do too many more of these you can paint larger areas as well um, there you go now it looks okay but one thing you can also do is click on this refresh option over here and it will try and resample and do a better blend it's actually worse there in my opinion there you go that's um i tried to be clever and do too large an area i think so let's just paint over it that's not too bad there we go i think we'll pretty much call that job done for now so come off the content aware tool um, let's zoom back out I think there's some funny stuff going on down here still now let's just see if we can patch that a little bit 
Put one there, here. Just try and blend that in a little bit better. That'll do for now. Come out. Can have a look at that in a little bit more detail in a moment. Again, if we come in now, we can see what we've actually done. Still not overly happy with this bit. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back and we're going to create our own mask this time, um, but not using one of the people selectors. We're actually just going to create it using a brush. I want to brush a particular area in. I'm going to create a mask and I've got this brush option. Here it is. And I'm going to paint over this cheek area. Um, let's, uh, no, we don't need those. Just painting over there. Uh, this mask. And again, I'm going to use my clarity slider. And I'm just going to pull it down. I'm trying to even up those tones a little bit, but I'm not having a lot of success. Right in the area, that's not too bad. Let's try just reducing the contrast as well. There we go, take the contrast out. And this one I'm gonna call, um, what can I call this one? Um, I'm just gonna call it brush for now. So that's a little bit better. Right, maybe now I can actually go back to my content aware tool Maybe just tidy this up a little bit. Yeah, that's not too, too bad now. Just want to take out some of those minor marks. So as you can see, it's really a game of just playing around, um, doing a little bit, seeing how it looks. But I'm gonna leave that there now. I'm reasonably happy with that. Come out, let's just go back to multi-view. And there you can see the difference of what we've done so far, which is great. Okay, I mentioned earlier though, that we can actually save these new masks as presets, and that's where this is really useful and a real time saver. Um, I'm gonna come out and I'm gonna go back into the masking tool, and let's just select the skin one to start with. And what I can do is I can come over to presets over here on the left-hand side, and I can add a preset, create preset, and you'll see what it actually comes up with is an option for all the things that we want to store in our preset. And there's only two that we want to do. Um, we don't need to worry about any of this stuff. We can turn all these off. Uh, we don't need any of this for what we're going to do. We do want calibration left on. That's to do with the way that how Lightroom processes the picture. And you will see that in the um, development module under one of the sections. It will tell you what version you're using effectively. Um, you want to leave that in there. Um, but what we want to do is under masking, we actually want to save a skin mask. This is going to be our mask for skin. And I'm going to put it in a group, it's use presets group, and I'm going to call it IB images, and we're going to call it uh, skin soften. Skin softening. Um, and we want to make sure that this support amount slider is checked. We talked about amount earlier, and now you'll see why it's important. Um, so you want to make sure that's checked and let me just hit create i'm going to do the same for some of these other masks we've got we don't actually have to select it over here um, again we go to preset create preset and this time i'm going to call it ib images um, and this time we'll do here and you can see most of it's turned off this time so we're just going to change it over to our hair setting create add create preset um, Maybe images, uh, what are we looking at now? Let's do um, good old sclera. Turn that off, create. You'll see they're all building up down here. Just doing these really quickly now, it's all the same. Um, maybe images and we'll do iris. Create, create preset. Um, eyebrows. Whoops. Nope. I don't think I actually changed the slip and do did I? Let's go to eyebrows, create. I've got a feeling I might have messed up this one. 
I'm just going to delete that one, recreate it. Just hit the delete, so create preset. Um, I can just clear up. Is that one? Get it right this time. There we go. Um, what I've got lips. I think that's just the last one. Oops, turn that off. Uh, okay. I'm not worried about brush because this was very localized and specific to this particular picture. But these ones I might want to reuse. So I'm not going to create brush. We're just going to finish with lips. And there we go. I've got all of my presets now. Just get rid of that. They're saved, um, but we can still play around with this image. We can change it. We can select any one of these masks at the end of the day and we can make changes. We could, for example, change the color of her hair. It's always quite good fun. Um, if I find, here we go, the hue. It's actually best to take out saturation a little bit as well so that the underlying color doesn't affect it. You can have quite good fun with that if you want to. We're not going to do that. She's got lovely hair as it is. Um, just double click on hue, we'll reset it. Double click on any of these, we'll reset their default values. Um, so let's just take the saturation back up. We want to desaturate it. But maybe, maybe just take the color up, highlight a little bit more. There we go. Right. So just uh, put that in there. And that is pretty much all I want to do with this one. So do just do one final look at our before and after. There we go. We can change the way we see this by just clicking on this option here as well if we want to. So different ways of viewing before and after. This tends to be the most useful. So hopefully you can see that that has made quite a lot of changes to the underlying picture. Um, and we haven't touched Lightroom at all, which is great. It could be tempted still to go into Lightroom, um, maybe do some frequency separation or something if you really wanted to. But I reckon on the whole, you can get away without doing it. But the presets, what about them? Well, let's go back to our other pictures in Grid. And I'm gonna take one that's actually completely different, I think. Um, let's take this one here, of Sophia. Yeah. So again, this was shot in autumn. Um, Generally speaking, it's okay. I'm not overly happy with the the actual um, process color that I've used for going to develop. Do -do 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 -do. My computer's suddenly gone on a very good slow. Here we go. Um, if you look, I'm using a, a Velvia setting, a Fuji Velvia profile setting, which is, it's a little bit sharp on the colors. It's designed for landscape. Um, so come in here maybe change it to something like pro neg which is a bit more natural on skin tones let's just start there to start with um, but now what i can do is i can actually put all my presets on um, that i've created even though they were done on a completely different photo so if i come over here to where my presets are and i just hover over skin soften you'll see it's already trying to detect what is it trying to detect it's trying to detect the new face and you can see now as i hover over it it's actually masked out the new face i haven't had to go in and tell it to select it it's said oh you've got a preset which is skin um, and you want me to find all the skin areas in this picture and that's what it's done and if i click on that it's applied it um, and again now if i come over to my masking options click on those you'll see we've got effect and for some reason oh, maybe i need to select it here we go um, i can actually increase or decrease the effect on this image itself so, and you'll notice that what it actually does is it applies the clarity and the texture settings, all the noise and the sharpness that we created when we, when we saved the preset, basically. Um, so we're not fixed. If it doesn't quite work for this picture, we can say, well, I don't need quite so much clarity, for example, and I can take it up, um, but it gives you a great starting place. So we've applied that one. We can quickly apply the hair one and we can the eyebrows and the lips <laughs> the white of the eyes <laughs> uh, I think that's everything isn't it one two three four five one two three four five there you go and if I come out of there for a minute 
you can already see the difference and we've hardly had to do any work at all um, obviously we didn't save the healing tool so we would go in now got our clone tool let's uh, just go in a little bit on the image just change the size and we can start just repairing as it were it's not repairing it's not really the right way to say it, is it don't have to repair her she's lovely uh, here we go some of these areas around here just on the chin a little bit we can take out some quite big areas I can take out this real wrinkle she's frowning she's wondering what the hell I'm doing next there we go and you can see I'm not really having to ask the computer to refresh or resample anything it's doing a great job superb tool there we go just come back out and there's our picture again what I'm going to do is I'm going to just work on this area a little bit more I'm going to create as it were a bespoke brush object just going to paint over there and I'm going to take the contrast out that seemed to work quite well before mm, not so great this time maybe take the shadow level up a little bit blacks and let's pull the clarity down again all the way that's a little bit better close that get our comparison up and there we go um, get the healing tool a little blemish just there got rid of that just a few more little marks there we go so very quick if we look at our history uh, most of it's healing brush which we would expect uh, but we did the bulk of our work in just five steps come back to the original uh, that was with the profile change just to get a better idea um, to our finished image one other quick little thing we can do just to finish it off actually is if I go back to masking options and I'll reselect the skin area sometimes it's nice just to warm up the skin um, this all top and all setting and that skin looks a little bit pale where we've played around with it if I just adjust the color temperature I can do that I can go either way obviously and I can go mad but just just increasing it just slightly will just give a bit of color to the skin and because we've already got that mask set um, we can just reuse it and just apply this temperature change to just the skin areas so a little bit better there we go just to warm the skin up slightly so I hope that's been of use and you can see the benefit of using the new masking tools in Lightroom 12 uh, and the healing tool, the new healing content aware tool, really speeds things up as well. Uh, and yeah, thanks for watching, and hopefully, you'll come back in the future for other tutorials. Bye for now.